Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how Walt Disney Imagineering's morale is pretty much at an all-time low. And how um, the company is being, or the division is being kind of like decimated or divided um, with this move to Florida and, um, and other potential cost-cutting measures. But we're also going to talk about, is it all Disney's fault, or is it California's fault, or is it both of their fault? Sorry, Bob Chapek's fault, uh, California's fault, or both. So let's go screen share the article. And yes, this is from a source that you guys, most of you may hate, but <clears throat> I feel like this is some, this is some true stuff here. <clears throat> okay. This is from Disneyland News Today. I won't go over the whole article, but basically, the title is, let's see, The Systemic Destruction of Walt Disney Imaginary. Current imaginary state morale has never been lower as Lake Nona move draws closer. Basically, in this article, <laughs> they interview Bob, as a interview Imagineers, and they say how this is just a big, cost-cutting measure for Bob Chapek to consolidate and lean out the company um, by putting everything in one central place, like known in Florida, and by uh, allowing or not allowing or making it hard for uh, current imaginers to move there. For example, in this article, um, they said uh, they only got it like Two days notice before the public did about this move. Uh, current imaginaries in the building. Here's the current imaginary imaginary building um, right here. But they only got like two days notice before the public did about the move. Um, there was forced retirements. There were um, layoffs, furloughs, and people only had 90 days to decide if they wanted to move to Florida or not. A lot of people said no. Some people said um, yes, but they're saying yes, holding on hope that the project or the move would be canned or shelved or kicked down the road and they'd have about a few years more employment at Walt Disney Imagineering. They didn't realize it would happen. They're hoping it wouldn't happen so um, soon. Um, so they have 90 days to um, do that, to change their minds. And people that even said no can change their minds uh, later on. Originally, they can move. They said this, they're going to move in teams just to Florida and with some people staying back. But so many people were wanted to le were leaving Walt Disney Imagineering that eventually they decided all Imagineers are going to move to Lake Nona, Florida. And that's about just 15% of the total Imagineering force in Glendale. 15% of the, are, um, other people have agreed to move. The rest, 85% have retired or are going to look for another job um, somewhere, hopefully Universal or some other cool theme park company they can make amazing lands for. Um, but that's um, crazy. And as you can see here in this comment, in this paragraph, said, when Walt Disney Imagineering presidents Bob Weiss and Barbara Bonza or Booza had to break the news to the entire campus, it was said that they looked distraught, and the perception of their peers was that they took the decision from the company very personally. And again, we all know Disney had a tough year. All theme parks, not everyone, all companies had a tough year with COVID nineteen. But I don't know, Bob Chapek. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. You shouldn't just thin out the Imagineering force like that. At least work out some deal, like keep some here, put some over there if they don't want to move. Um, I and mean, this is years of experience here. And uh, this can be, as this article says, you can't, these people don't come at a lower price point. So if you hire new imaginaries in Florida for a lower price point, the quality of stuff will be, you know, cheaper. And these imaginaries are also talking about how. So much of Toysterland was cut, and um, 
the audio animatronics, the walk around character or walk around audio animatronics and live entertainment for Galaxy's Edge was one of the first thing to be cut immediately, which is why I never got those promised animatronics and droids walking around, which sucks. Um, and this sense here, no matter who you talk to, the story seems to be the same. Walt is imagining is a mess at the moment, and that sucks because. What does that mean for New Lands going forward? Will we just get more clones at parks? Because, um, you know, there won't be enough uh, imagination to do research and development, or Disney won't, won't want to pour enough money into the company um, to do research and development of new innovative attractions. We'll be getting clones. We're sure getting a lot of clones now. Beginning Maze of Runner Railway, Tron, got, uh, Ratatouille. The only new original ride is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot that was already in development before this has happened. But even in the new projects, you know, Avengers Campus, Web Singers is, is a clone, well, Paris is a clone, uh, Watson Studio, Studios, the other, uh, Watson Studios Park, uh, the other expansions there, the lake and the frozen land, they're all clones. Hong Kong is a clone. So I wonder if we'll keep getting clones of things or if there will be some new innovative ride uh, concepts coming out of it. What is imagining with, you know, only 15% of the workforce from California going over there? Very interesting. But the real question also was, is this fully Bob JPEG's fault? All of Bob, uh, or any of Bob JPEG's fault? Or is it also California's fault? As you see, the decision to move to Lake Nona, Florida, was in the middle of COVID-19 when California still wouldn't reopen and the parks were still closed and Bob Iger left Gavin Newsom's, uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 recovery board or whatever he had, task force. And you know, Disney and California were really kind of fighting there. They were publicly fighting in all theme parks in California, but especially Disney and California were, were fighting. And, um, that is very important because as kind of like a negotiation tool, Disney could have said, all right, fine. You won't give us some theme park guidelines or come to an agreement with us? Well, we're going to take our offices and move to Florida. Um, and it helps out them because, you know, again, cost-cutting measure. And it, they can just consolidate everything at Disney World. And Florida was open to the business, open for business. And welcome to the expansion. Welcome to the 2,000 or so employees that will be there. But, yeah, is this partially Gavin Newsom's fault, right? For Also, even if they say things were shut down, right, when they announced the move, Newsom didn't offer any, you know, tax rebates or something to try to get California or Disney to stay in California here. And they should have. Because uh, I mean, California. This is this is Disneyland's roots and the Walt Disney Company's roots, right here in Burbank, California. Uh, they should, and they're they're not Disney not leaving forever. I mean, there's you know, Disney Studios, Walt Disney Studios, and even park acts aspects are still in Burbank, Glendale. But Disney should be, or California should be, giving tax breaks and incentives for for Disney to build that Lake Nona campus here, make it a Burbank campus instead of a Lake Nona campus, they should build it over here with tax breaks and incentives because you know the movie studios are here, the parks, the original parks here, the headquarters of Disney Imagineering are here until or for, for now, and the headquarters of other parks operations are all here, all here for the entire world. I mean, projects, projects in Paris and, and Hong Kong and all over Shanghai, Disney World, even. They come here too. They start off here, and then they go fly off. So I don't know. I definitely think it's both Bob Shapek and Gavin Newsom's fault uh, for the Disney move to Florida. And but the real losers, are the poor Imagineers who have to either be forced to be retired, or have to pack up and move, or quit because they can't afford to pack up and move because uh disney also in that article said they weren't offering relocation packages so maybe some people can't afford to move and 
or just don't want to, or their whole life's here. Kids are in school or whatever, and maybe they just can't afford to move. So, unfortunately, the losers here, the real losers, are the poor imagineers who have been with the company, some probably for decades, and now are, are left jobless. But what do you guys think? Whose fault do you think that is? California, Gavin, or California, Bob JPEX, or a little bit of both on each side? And do you agree that the real losers are the Imagineers? What, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe for more theme park updates. And if you like this video, press that thumbs up button. As always, have a fantastic day.